Hello everybody and welcome to the very last part of Unit 4. We're going to talk about facility types and regulations very, very quickly. So why are we talking about facility types? Um, I will tell you up front, there's, this is not on the test. Um, so don't, uh, you know, if, if that concerns you, if they're, you're worried about a grade here, there's no grade for this part. So you can just, if you want to. Uh, the reason I'm uh, doing these last two bits, they don't really relate to nutrition per se, but if you're working with geriatric patients, very often you're working in long-term care facilities or with long-term care facilities, which is a uh, long-term care is just a, is a blanket term that covers multiple different levels of care that um, mostly cater to the elder population. So we're looking at independent living, assisted living, long-term care, which is its own subtype within long-term care, confusingly, and skilled nursing. So we'll start with the, the lightest level of care, which is independent living, which is really exactly what it sounds like. It, they, it's independent. They don't really, they don't need anybody. They're there for, uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, it's kind of blank on you there. They're, they're there just to live in a community of similar people. There is some oversight to this. There is, there is some medical staffing available that kind of, it's not there for care. Uh, you'll see at the bottom there, they do not provide medical services. That medical team is there. It's uh, nurses typically that are there to connect residents to care. If they need to see the podiatrist, um, obviously, they can go to whoever they want to. If they don't have one or they're having a hard time getting there, then that medical team will connect them to somebody and organize some transportation for them. Um, most of the time, these are full apartments. Kind of think of them as a condominium style living. You know, apartments, uh, they have group resident facilities, things like a gymnasium, meeting rooms, game rooms, libraries, things like that. It depends on the facility. Uh, some of them offer amenities. Remember, these are full, uh, full service apartments. They're one hundred percent independent. So there's a kitchen in there. That all of all of that's available. But some of them do offer meals made that residents can purchase, a laundry facility, housekeeping facilities, and some of them have organized activities too. So there's not just it's not just residents that organize activities, but there may be a staffing group that organizes. I don't know bingo or bridge or club or something like that. So why do you care? Um, all independent uh, level residents are seen on an outpatient basis. Again, there is no direct medical staff, but um, at least within the facility I work with, uh, my typical focus is the long-term care skilled nursing group. But I do go see patients on um, in independent living uh, uh, per request. You know, if there is somebody that needs a dietitian consult, obviously, again, they can go to whoever they want to. But again, those the nurse navigators are typically what that medical team is called. We'll say we do have a dietitian if you would like to see him instead. So regulation wise, uh, only local ordinances. So it's only building requirements for the city. It's only uh, the local health department, and that will you'll see why that matters here in a minute. As far as requirements for residents, how what what do you have to be like to be able to live in one of these facilities? Um, they uh, they have to be medically independent. Again, the remember the numbers here. The number of people that have a some sort of chronic condition in this population group very very high. Chances are very good that everybody will have something. They have to be able to take care of themselves. Can you, can you take your own medication? Can you dose insulin correctly? Can you check your high, your blood pressure? Things like that. Um, or if they're coming in and they have some sort of medical concern that they cannot take care of, but they want to be an independent living, they can hire a 24-hour care team. It's somebody that's a care provider that stays in the room with or in the apartment with them. Okay, so... I will briefly go back there. I don't often do uh, much with independent living. That's not very common for me. Assisted living, now we're getting into places where I'm more involved as, as the dietitian. 
the uh, assisted living is kind of a gray area. Um, it's it was designed to meet the needs of people who can't quite live independently, but really don't need the intensive care of a long term care facility. So it's kind of a gray middle ground. Um, generally speaking, this is for residents that require again some just like light assistance with ADLs, grooming, toileting, eating, and by that I mean. Uh, diet could help or maybe some consistency adjustment, but not uh, like help feeding themselves. That would be more intensive. Uh, many of the things that are provided are based on the service plan of the building. So there is no set standard for what assisted living can do. It's based on what the building says it can do. So some places offer uh, consistency adjustments. The assisted living that I work with does offer um, consistency adjustments, but not every assisted living facility does. They all have some sort of contracted therapy group. They, um, so residents there can receive in-house therapy. They may get it, they, they may have, the facility may have a gym, a therapy gym that therapists use. It may be done in the apartments, kind of depends again on the facility in question. It is staffed by medical personnel, not Everybody in the facility is a, uh, say, is a nurse or a therapist or a dietitian, but there are some. That there, the building managers are nurses. The there are nurses on the floor. Most of the people are not. They just will, if something happens, they'll go get a nurse. They also have a medical director. So there is a doctor that oversees care in the facility. So when do you see them? Um, they're usually a, um, outpatient basis, but they will be in the facility. So this is a little bit like if you are a dietitian that makes house calls to people, they can be counseled on a regular ongoing basis. Typically what I find is that I will come in and talk to them a couple of times. Maybe they're newly diagnosed diabetic. Maybe they're, um, they want to make some alterations to the diet. It but it's usually one or two times I visit with them and then I you know, give them my contact information, like call me if you need something. So it can be an ongoing thing. I just don't typically see that happen. The facility menus that are served have to be approved by a dietitian. The, uh, remember I said earlier that the uh, independent living had only, only answered to local ordinances, I guess. That's the way I say that. So... Uh, there are state regulations for assisted living. These are individually done by the state. They're not, there's no federal control of assisted livings yet. I, I do think that's coming. I think we're going to see an arms race as we go of making more niches of care levels and then having regulation catch up to those levels and then making another one. I, I think that's where this is going. So the regulations in Texas are the Texas Administrative Code, Title 4, I won't read all that for you. So the requirement there, again, is that the requirements for admission is that you have to need some ADL assistance. Again, not a lot. You need to be able to do most of it yourself. Also, if I remember correctly, you have to be able to self-evacuate in a disaster. And, and it's some very strange number, like you have to be able to self-evacuate in 13 minutes. And how they came up with that number, I do not know. Okay, long-term care. This is also nursing homes. Um, this, this is what people think of when they think of nursing homes. It's not really... This is an industry standard now, I'm sure. People don't typically refer to them as nursing homes anymore. It's kind of a stigma to that title. They either prefer long-term care facilities or um, some, will, some will refer to them as like living centers. They provide 24-hour medical care for patients unable... Uh, blah unable to meet multiple ADLs. Um, they do have therapies available on site and their long-term care facilities will almost always have therapy facilities in the building. They will have you know, a gym that they specifically people go to for therapy. They uh, have a medical director and a bespoke PC of some sort. So when I say typically have a medical director and a bespoke PC, what I mean there is they will always have a medical director. 
sometimes that medical director also does rounding in the building. Sometimes there is another uh, care provider. It might be another doctor. It might be a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner who is dedicated to that building and they are the primary care provider for those residents unless they choose to have a different primary care provider. Um, and so the other form of long-term care it does get confusing. Skilled nursing and nursing homes both fall under the long-term care umbrella. This is for patients that require 24-hour care, but there is an anticipated level of, or amount of recovery where they are going to be able to rehab back to where they were before or close to that. So this often is from either a really, really acute illness or injury or they're recovering from surgery. So they're stable. They're not quite ready to go back yet. Uh, but the, they, the plan is that they will be discharged to home or whatever as they were. The typical length of stay is about three weeks. And this is for things, think of somebody who is on um, long-term antibiotic, uh, IV antibiotic for an infection, a uh, person who is recovering from a knee replacement surgery, something like that. So in the nursing home, uh, when will you see them? Nursing home patients are referred to as residents, and I'm just putting that there because, one, uh, I've probably referred to them as residents at some point in the in the course. And that's why, just have it. Uh, but it's important to remember that in all of these facilities, they do live there. So instead of calling these individuals patients, they're referred to as residents or elders sometimes. They are required to be seen by the dietitian at least every 90 days or... Uh, at the, I'm sorry, every 90 days, first admission, then every 90 days after that, and then at a sentinel event, which is a change of condition. Something really massive happens. They have a stroke. Their level of care increases. They have a, have a fall. Something like that happens, and then the dietitian comes back in to visit them at that point. The facility menu has to be approved by a registered dietitian, and the facility site must have an on-site certified dietary manager, which is a special certification to allow that trains somebody to do some medical nutritional therapy and lets them work in a in a uh, institutional background. So they either have to be a CDM or they, the facility has to have a full-time dietitian on staff. So when do you see uh, people in skilled? Um, on admission, obviously the rule about, technically speaking, the rule about every 90 days is in place for skilled nursing also, but it's very rarely an issue since they're only there for three weeks, usually or less. Uh, so you see them on admission and what I frequently see is, um, here's, here's a list of people, uh, skilled is kind of an interesting one because it's, it's so complex. It's, there's a lot going on there. Now, a lot of these people, to be sure, are people who have a hip replacement or a knee replacement or something like that. But there's quite a bit of other people that come in, too. So I see all of these individuals at different times. So that is a very, very quick overview of... Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you about the <laughs> requirements yet. Um, so, again, both skilled and long-term care fall under the same regulations. Um this is, it was started, and we'll go into this more in the next one. It's the Federal Nursing Homes Act of 1987 is what gives federal government authority over nursing homes. Uh, it's usually referred to as the 87 Omnibus. If you're, I, I'm going to say if you talk about it, it's not like we go around talking about this act a lot or anything. Uh, there's the, um, nope, that way. There is the federal code and also the state code for Texas. Again, this is each, each state has to follow the federal codes, but you can certainly in the state have more stringent regulations. They, you know, the federal code, the federal guidelines are just the minimum that a facility has to meet. The state can ask for more. Okay, that is facilities. And I will catch you on the next one to talk very, very briefly about regulations. All right, you have a good day. Bye.